Hello, and welcome back to Color Cues. Color Cues is a series from Homepage News and the Inspired Home Show, and it was created to bring you actionable updates and inspiration on evolving color trends in the home and house first market. We know the best way to do that is to speak to the world's leading color trend forecasters and influencers. And I'm really lucky today to have Joe Derachowski, the vice president of NPD Group and home industry advisor. Joe, thanks for joining us today. Um, we had not planned to speak to you, frankly. Um, and then you and I had a conversation yesterday and so many interesting things evolved out of it that we decided to add you into the queue. And I'm really glad. Um, so, Joe, thousands of retailers and manufacturers like have experience with the kind of intelligence that NPD provides and what NPD, NPD does for the industry. But I think everybody sort of has a slightly different view because, you know, from different perspectives. Can you do me a favor and just sort of give us an overview of NPD's role in the industry? Because it's, it's just really important when we all use it. So. <laughs> well, uh, thanks, Tom. And I really do appreciate being part of your podcast here. Um, the way I look at it is this. The NPD, we're really about helping our clients measure their business. So how are they doing versus the industry or their competitors? Uh, and then the second part is to help predict the future. Part of that is by understanding what's currently happening helps you think forward. And we have a variety of analytical techniques to also help with that area. And then a bunch of other business decisions that we use for analytics, such as pricing and promotion or other variables that are out there that you can use with point of sale data. And, and we couple it with thought leadership of also trying to look forward and help our clients anticipate what the future is going to be. And the way we do it is we really have point of sale data that we get. So every time you buy something and think general merchandise is the area that mm -hmm. we kind of cover that every time you buy something, data gets scanned, that data feed gets fed to us and by the retailers who participate. And so they can compare themselves to the rest of the market, but then also manufacturers are able to use that to understand their share and trend and how that's playing out. We couple that and surround that with uh, some other consumer data that tracks receipt harvesting. So it catches all the things that you purchase. And because it's longitudinal, I can track your behavior over time within specific individuals or households. And then we also add custom research. So if we got to do some specific questions to help fill in the gaps, we kind of use that in that area. So it really comes down to a lot of uh, analytics, leveraging our point of sale data or our checkout data that we have. And we try to make it be not only about today, but also what the future is going to look like. Well, I think the work that we've done together with the IHA and the work that I've seen you do with the IHA and other companies as well, um, it, it's really illuminated, especially recently, the fact that NPD does a lot of predictive work. You know, I mean, I think I think a lot of people think of NPD as, a, as an incredible data mine, you know, and I can find out information, but it's it's a lot of that sadly isn't used looking forward and you really you guys have been great with that so i just want to you know i wanted to clear it up because it's it's something that it's a part of npd that i've just recently been exposed to a lot more um so talking about color when we look at i think a lot of executives a lot of large companies look at color in particular as, a, as an area of risk because you know home housewares home decor they continue to evolve as fashion businesses so the you know it used to be okay we could say a color trend is going to last for you know three years, four years, and there was a big trickle down from European markets. If we saw it in Europe, that it would show up in the U.S. and maybe, you know, I don't know, uh, three years. And that's shortened to almost nothing. Uh, it's really become a homogenized marketplace in terms of trend. So what, how, you know, do you agree that that period is shortened and how is NPD responding to that? Well, first of all, just to clarify, the color details and the data we get is a little bit at a higher level. So is it more solids? Is it more whites? Is it more patterns? Or is it more uh, landscapes and things of that nature? And it goes across different categories. So I, as to, is it this color or this shade of yellow or this shade of green or that color? Right, right. We, we, we're not so much there. But what we do is to do it, see is how it plays into us. And I think the big change that's happening right now and therefore our industry, the big thing to be thinking about is we have, it's, it's, it's like, a, it's always been a marriage of design and functionality in all the products we have. In some areas it's been so design focused 
that you try to dial up the functionality, like like dinnerware, for example, and saying, hey, we're eating more one dish meals, so we need a little bit of an edge to this in addition to what we had before. Or some areas that have been so functional oriented, we need to add a little bit of design, like toasters as a good example, or things of that nature. So it's, it's really trying to help um, think about this from a broader perspective. And I think we're at a little inflection point here in 2022 that uh, we want to think about. And what I mean by that is heading into this, these last several years, it's been more about uh, we want something to be versatile. So we want it to, uh, you got a little Sorry. Like no, I love it. Keep, I just keep right. it going. Uh, it's very cute. Um, and so what we wanted was something to be versatile. So whether it was in tabletop or whether it was in bedding or bath, in those areas, you started to see a lot of colors and a lot of it being whites in that area that allowed you to mix and match and something that you could use by different seasons throughout the year. So it really, or throughout the week. So it, it tended to be about versatility. It was a big component of what we've seen over the past several years. But I feel like in 2022, we're at a, a unique point we're just starting that third year of the pandemic, right? We just did 2020 and 2021. And so we're just starting. And I think people are just, for lack of better words, sick and tired of the same mm-hmm. old, same old. Yep. Of the rut. They're of sick and tired thing. of being sick and tired. And so I think we're craving something new. And we're craving not just something new, but something that has a pizzazz, a spark that brings life or, or a vibrancy. And so I really have a feeling from a color perspective that this is the first year in several that we're really looking for something to help add a pizzazz and a spark in life and bring vibrancy to us consumers. So well, I think it's an ask- interesting time right now yeah. as we head into this. It's, uh, I mean, I, I couldn't agree with you more. It's just interesting to hear you speak this way because I don't think I've, we've been working together for over a decade and I don't think I've ever heard you sort of swell about something it's it's i mean you're like the consumer it's almost an emotional inflection where we're at this point where i, I gotta have something so it's very cool <laughs> but i think there's money i think there's money to be made here and so that's why oh, yeah. you know, well, it's that's, always that's, important color right. is always always important but i just think this year uh we're at the precipice of something where it can really help make a difference and and not only help you know from a business perspective but also from a consumer perspective so joe does does Color in home and housewares, does it play a bigger role in some categories versus others? And I'm not asking you to, to you know, make any predictions on color. And, and by the way, I think what you said before is important for people to know. Joe's not a trend forecaster, but in terms of, you know, I'm never going to ask you what color to paint my room. Let's put it that way. You know, but right. it's no one's intended. But <laughs> the I think that where NPD sits is in a very, like you said, 30,000 feet. Color is going to be more important and, and you know, whatever color is right for your business and your brand, that's where you got to take it. But are there categories where color is um, more, is it more important in accessories businesses? Is it, is it more important based on price point? Where, where are those opportunities going to be for um, this sort of, um, you know, blooming of color, so to speak? I, I, I think there's a few ways that I, I look at it. First of all, if it's something where I'm spending time and it's an image of myself, so I have probably friends or guests or other people looking, it's going to be very important. So think of tabletop, right. serveware, your bath towels, like in your guest room, you know, the yeah. paint in your, your house and stuff. So when it's something that has uh, other people are looking at it and it's a reflection of yourself, like that's going to be one of the areas. Mm-hmm. The second area is going to be those areas that you just spend a lot of time in. That's important. And think of your bedding, you know, your bedroom and stuff. That's an area that you spend a lot of time in. And so it's obviously going to be very important for you there. Where I think the opportunity is, is I think this year we're going to start to extend and possibly into other categories that we hadn't thought about. And a good example of that would be um, some floor care products. There's been some recent innovations that allow consumers to be much more, they can do quick spot cleaning and stuff. So sometimes they're not leaving these in closets and they're leaving them out. Well, if you do that, there's going to be a little bit of design trend because it's foreseeable. You might see We're not renting them anymore. Now we're owning them. So when you're owning, you know, carpet cleaners, you know, you go to the grocery, you go to Home Depot and you buy it and it's clear for a day. But I think that when you own it, you want more, you want more design sensibility. Uh, you think of uh, uh, some of your home comfort stuff. Think of air purifiers or fans or things of that nature that, again, could be out for the public 
to see or your friends or guests. And so it's something that you're going to want to also make sure that it not only performs well, but it also looks good. And then as it relates to the kitchen, there's some opportunities there too. Now, a lot of it is going to want to match your cabinets and your countertops and your other appliances. So you're going to want to make sure it fits that flow to some degree, but there's a little bit of potential to explore, shall we say. Yeah. Uh, and a good example being cookware, right? Like there's mm -hmm. always been color in cookware, but it's also as people are using them to a degree, a little bit more as a throw pillow. And there's some decorations that could go with it, that it also becomes a little bit more important as well, not a, a distinguishing feature. So to wrap, you know, I really look at those things who are seeable by the your guests. So serveware, dinnerware, tabletop, those things that you spend a lot of time, think of bedding, think of bath, think of window, uh, think of even uh, uh, window treatments and kitchen and dining rooms because you're just around these areas a lot. And then those things where you're really starting to want to put some accentuation in areas that we maybe haven't thought about, such as floor care, uh, home comfort categories, kitchen electric categories, personal care categories. I could see a lot of that playing into it as well. You know, it's interesting. I'm curious. There's been across home a lot more interest in in outdoor, you know, and, uh, you know, it, it's already been there and furniture has been there for you know, a year, 18 months. has been a lot of focus on that. But I think in housebrows categories, you know, it, I, I'm, I'm anticipating it's going to step to the next level because there's so much talk about it. But, you know, everything goes outside. We're calling the trend inside out, outside in, because it's like we, you want your outdoors to almost feel like indoors. You know, and you want your indoors to have the flexibility of the products that you have outdoors. Um, but that's one of the, one of the areas that seems like it's an opportunity for color too. We just yeah, I agree with you. So one of the things that's happened with the pandemic is it's made us crave to be outside more. One, we feel safer, but it's also we want to meet with <laughs> our friends and family, and that usually involves food and things of that nature. So we saw in 2020 in our sales data for home improvement, like such a big emphasis on the outside. You could see consumers were really dialing up uh, everything that they have outside, including in grilling and all the accessories related to that. So what ends up happening is as you're spending more time and you're entertaining guests, that gets back to that bucket of these are times that there's people around us. Now, this is one of the segments, like you said, that focus so much on functionality that maybe they, there was an opportunity for them to dial up the design part. And some of this is playing in that where, where a lot of the color plays out. So I think it's very good. Now, the same thing from other areas that, that includes the tabletop that you might bring outside that you wanted mm -hmm. to have that type of nature is going to be very different than the types of colors that you would want to have for a holiday party with your friends. Yeah. So being able to think and make each of these moments a little bit different, a little bit special, a little bit of your story, I think is an opportunity for us this year. I think it also takes some of the, some of the risk out of when we go back to entertaining, you know, we're in this sort of inter pandemic period where it's not over and, you know, it's it's not over, but it's not as bad as it was, but maybe it is. And so when we, we're in and out of entertaining and the thoughts of it. And it's outdoor entertaining is like the safest of the first entertaining you're going to do. I mean, we had people outdoors and, and, you know, open air, you've got a backyard if, you know, if you're lucky enough to have one. And you know, so it's since that's the low hanging fruit in terms of entertaining and reentering that field, it's a great place to, to have a focus because, you know, when we really don't know what's going to happen. Um, so you, one of the things that I've always liked about you is that you, your work is you reach beyond the, you reach beyond the numbers and you always seem to have one or two sort of emotional touch points, like stories, <laughs> like stories about, you know, that you feel sort of encapsulate where the consumer is. And so are there any, what are the like emotional touch points that retailers should be aware of while, while we're merchandising? And but you listen to people, there, there's like this innate craving of just that something new. So some of the inflection points is as we hit the traditional life moments that we hit throughout the year, whether gifting season or dieting season or outdoor entertaining or all of those, I think every single one of those is going to be at that inflection point of just saying, okay, I need to up it, but I just want it to be different, but with a possess, like it's not just new. And it's not just a functional, it wants to have a spark to it that just gives me energy. And so I think all of those life moments are going to be opportunities for both retailers and manufacturer to think of a new way to leverage. How can we truly make this special? 
And that's part of the reason why I think color this year compared to other years has a bigger role to help add that pizzazz, to add that little bit of life to it. What's going through my head right now, I think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And it's got to solve the basic through. And a color tends to play at a little bit of a higher order need that people have. Yes. And in this year where we're looking, it's the emotional element that color brings that doesn't always get talked about, that doesn't always get there, but it is, it helps add spice to stuff. Like it just makes good great. It just makes great even better, right? And right. I think this is that year where we're looking for a little bit more of that. And that's part of the reason why it's kind of exciting and why we're talking about color is I think this is really a wonderful year. And it might be for a few years here and it'll always be important, yeah, I think, but, I think it'll be. but I just think this is an extra special year. Yeah, it, color is just, it's an emotional punctuation in a way. It's, yeah. it's just that. And I think that's when you say, talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, it's like that, that idea of putting color as like the icing on the cake, so to speak. It's almost that we were, I was talking to another forecaster and they were saying, you know, that everybody comes back to Maslow, right? But they're saying, you know, it's the pyramid on its head. Now, a lot of us want, even if it's for the moment, we want emotion first, we want the icing first, and then we'll deal with the cake later. <laughs> so, and I think the color really represents an opportunity to, 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 to address that, that need. Um, so I'm going to ask you something that's, uh, we're kind of moving into the, um, the personal part of the interview. So. Uh, we can forget about everything you know about numbers and, and all of that. It's just Joe. If there's a single color that creates a strong emotional response in you, what is it? Um, well, I like, I like sky blue because there's sky blue is what I would say. Sky blue allows a little bit of a calming effect. Uh, there's just something about it. I mean, who doesn't, I, I, I love sunsets. I love, the, the ability looking at a nice blue sky and you got the ocean right there it doesn't matter. and, and <laughs> two or three and, and, and two or three clouds two or three clouds no more just two or three <laughs> so you get some white in there because what you always just, gotta have your... just to put the contrast no it's just so funny yours is such a positive response and in some of these interviews you know you get red makes me sad you know it's, it's like just great stuff. but i think we're all responding to color right now you know um yeah. okay so I want you to fill in the blank on this one. Don't ever think it. In the current inter-pandemic environment, consumers are looking to color for a sense of? In 2022? 2022. Life, life, vibrant, pizzazz. I like that. I think that's really true. You know, and, and it's, again, I think it's interesting that your your response, every word that you said was not, it was an intangible. It wasn't a function. It was, wasn't was speed. It was, you know, it, you put emotion first. And that, that's true. Well, that wraps this episode of Color Cues. Thank Joe, thank you so much for spending so much time with us. Uh, again, Joe Derachowski, Vice President, NPD Group, Home, Home Industry, Industry Advisor. Uh, Industry Advisors. <laughs> Just friend. Um, yeah. Friend is a good way. How's that? Joe Derachowski, NPD Group, friend. Excellent. I like that too. Again, this is Tom Mirabli for Color Cues for the Inspired Home Show and Homepage News. For more episodes, visit us at theinspiredhome.com or homepagenews.com or, of course, springboardfutures.com. Thank you all for spending some time with us, and we'll see you next time.